All right, so some common problems with running your own saw is maximizing your saw's power and getting through cuts quickly and safely and effectively. So there's a lot of variables that you have to go through. Uh, basically, everywhere between the tip of this tooth where it hits the wood all the way back to your engine, there's a variable. Some of the big ones that I've uh, tinkered on and worked with to get my saw working right is starting making sure that you have good shanks and good teeth. If you're not sure if they're good shanks good teeth, just buy them and replace them. It will save you a lot of headache in the long run. That's the most important thing, that your teeth are sharp and um, are able to get a good cut and bite. And then that shank is able to catch that dust and throw it out and not bind your cut and slow it down. So that's number one. Well, I guess I should back up. There's a bunch of other variables. Your saw, it should go without saying that your saw and carriage all should be straight level and plumb where it can be so that's the that's the main thing but i'm assuming if you're got your saw up and running and you're sawing it should you should have already done that um where i started having trouble was when i first started is getting it to get through a cut um, and make straight lines and do a good job without the saw getting hot and, and binding and whatnot so yeah starting with number one it's the teeth got to be got to be sharp if your teeth ain't sharp then you're just kicking tires and kicking rocks down the road. Um, everything, all your other variables are gonna not ever work out right. So that's number one. Number two is make sure your saw blade's getting up to speed. Yeah, this is really, it's a lot easier if you know what your saw's supposed to be hammered at. Um, if you don't know, it's easy to say, yeah, you should go buy a new one and you can specify it when you order it. That's easy to say, but you can also, if it's in pretty good shape and well, let's back up. If you don't know if it's in good shape, you should find a person that hammers saw blades. In North Carolina, there's a fellow out in Hamlet. But he, um, when I first got started, I took the took the plate off and just took the whole thing to him, and he went over it. We we looked at it closely and decided it should be spinning at like 550 RPM at the tooth. So that's what I strive to do. And now you're asking, how do you measure that, and how do you make sure that's right? Well, if you have a decent engine with a tachometer that tells you the RPMs at the motor and you're able to measure the driver pulley to the driven pulley, you can calculate the ratio and from the RPMs coming off the engine, you can determine how fast your blade's going to be spinning. That's a, I guess, old school way of doing it. Um, they also make like digital tachometers where you can I guess measure the blade using it or and they also have ones that are I guess analog with a wheel or whatnot where you can measure it and figure out exactly that's probably kind of dangerous though so beware the other thing about a saw plate and getting bind, starting to bind in the cut and slowing down is how much toe in and toe out you got or I guess I don't know what it's called but we call it toeing in so if you try to run that carriage and the log straight with the saw just a path of least resistance the saw will have the tendency to start the bow and go out of the cut and then your boards will get narrower and narrower at the end and you'll have uh, inconsistent width if it's towed too far in it'll do the opposite the cut will get wider and wider and wider at the end and that's bad too and then that will make the blade get hot and then it'll start warping and then you'll bind in the cut and that will make you think you're losing power too so one way to adjust that is by adjusting these nuts here. And you can measure how much toe in you got if your saw blade is plumb and your mandrel is nice and level. You should be able to measure the distance at a consistent spot on the rim from there to your support, from there to your support. And it should be a little wider here than here, but not by much. I forget how much this one is, but it's on the order of eighths of an inch difference. And that keeps our blade staying in the cut and our board widths consistent. If that's off, that will slow down your blade, make it heat up, start to warp, and then you will not be able to run right. And by the way, all this information is in the efficient use of sawmills. It's a, you can Google that, efficient use of sawmills in their production or something like that. I'll put that in the description as well. It's a free PDF that's available out there. You can Google. and It has a lot of this information in there. So as a baseline, you should be referencing that when you're getting set up and getting started. Uh, that should be your go-to. But it has all the calculations of how to calculate off of the measurements of your pulleys. 
to determine what RPM you need to be running your motor at if you're able to do so to get the right speed. So number one, sharp teeth. Number two, right speed and a good plate that's hammered to the speed that you're running it. Uh, the next big thing to look at is your uh, main pulley and your main belt. The main pulley to the main, so the driver to the driven is actually not as tight as you think it should be. If you're running it too tight, it can do more harm than good. It can run extra strain. And you want it to be a little loose. You want it to slip if something bad happens. You don't want it to, you know, go crazy and tear something up. So one way you can measure, and if in that PDF production guide, there is a, a description on how to assess the tightness of your belt. I think the way I ended up doing it based off of that manual is taking a four foot level, laying it across it from across these pulleys, and then taking a sledgehammer with a 10 pound head on it and putting it on there to wet down about in the middle with the level across it. You can see how much the belt drops with that 10 pound weight and you can measure it with a ruler from the level to the top of the belt. And I think according to that book, I want to say it's like half an inch or an inch, but needless to say, it's a way to standardize how you're measuring other than just going, yeah, that's tight or yeah, that's loose. You can kind of standardize it and see what works for you. Uh, so that's the next thing. And you can always apply belt dressing to this if it is, a if it is kind of loose to make sure that it's kind of tacky and it's getting a good grip. Uh, you want to make sure they're in line, obviously, and all that goes without saying. Um, and there's different ways to do that. Um, I got some stabilizer bars with some bolts and kind of attached to there. And you can adjust your engine to pull it and go away from it with chains and come alongs, which I've done to some supports right here at the sawmill that are kind of under underlying everything to get the right tension on it. And once you get it, um, it's usually pretty good because this motor's pretty heavy and I just keep the chain on there. So that's the probably the third thing. Um, if you've done all of that and you're still slowing down in your cut and you can't figure out why and you're losing power, I scratched my head for almost a year before I finally started looking at my clutch and the PTO. So one way you can kind of rough guess on your PTO shaft, if it's kind of hard to push up in there, that's, probably, that's good because that means your clutch is tight. If it's floppy and loose, you can push it and you can take your pinky and knock it all off. That means your clutch plate's loose. So I guess this is a beware segment. If you start getting into this, then you start to adjust the, I guess, fail safe mechanisms. So it can be dangerous if you tighten your clutch too much. You hit something hard and your motor can't slip. It could tear up your motor and cause deathly harm. So there's your beware statement. But if it's really, really loose and you need to do something about it, on your PTO, mine has a plate here. You remove this plate and on the inside you can tighten up your clutch plate. There's a big lock nut and it's exactly like you would think, righty top, tidy, lefty loosey. And you can take a long flat screwdriver and a mallet and just, it's got notches in it where you can catch a screwdriver and you can tighten it up until you feel this become about, about this tight. That's how tight I had to get mine and that fixed all my problems. It's a little bit harder to disengage it. That's what you want because otherwise if you're not paying attention, you're wondering why your saw's not running, it's because your clutch is disengaged and you're not transmitting power from your engine to your saw blade. So that really changed things for me. Um, I hope it helps you. Um, if you have questions, I'll try to help you. So that's that.